south of Shanghai and speak with Gordon Orr. He's the director and chairman of McKinsey Asia, and he's going to help us, I guess, better understand what's going to be discussed and what could actually happen. Let's start with what could be discussed at these meetings, in your opinion. Philip, thank you. Um, I think from, from a business perspective, we're all really excited to, to hear the, uh, the pace and, and, and the direction of SOE reform and the extent to which the, the government really is going to step back from various sectors, allowing individual state enterprises to stand on their own two feet to compete more independently against others. And as your reporter just said, whether that's going to create opportunities, not just for multinationals, but for, for many private Chinese companies as well. Gordon, it's been quite the last couple of years for China economically. You have the camp that's very bullish on China, and then you have the more skeptical camp as well. I, I, I guess my question to you is, what's going to be the greatest challenge for China to try to overcome in the next 12 to 18 months? I think for the, for the government, the, the, the biggest challenge is really going to be con continuing the pace of shift to a consumer-driven economy. Uh, we've had good progress on that over the last four or five years, but it's another 10-year journey to go. Uh, and we need to sustain the confidence of consumers that they can spend, that they, the wealth they've invested in their assets and stock market and wealth management products and housing is secure, that their pension and health care is going to be secure and most importantly that the affordability gap is going to get smaller not larger the gap between what the, the growth in their income and the growth in the growth in the price of the assets that they're looking to buy cars and most importantly housing our reporter i mentioned some of the some of the issues you spoke about inclu including the, specifically the housing the property sector being a little bit too hot now the government has taken moves to try to calm that sector down and i'm just wondering in your opinion if that's that's actually working well what one of the markers that i just perhaps just pose out as a question is it's been very obvious over the last uh, few months maybe 9 months that uh, major Chinese property developers are increasing their investment outside of China. Um, and I wonder if that's a leading market because, you know, they're pretty close to the market. The other uh, situation you have on the economic side is this Chinese yuan currency. It has dropped of late and some are speculating that perhaps that might mean that the Chinese authorities might be widening the, the trading ban for the yuan uh, versus the other major currencies. Do you think that is uh, perhaps a realistic expectation? It, it, it's a possibility, um, but for Philip, I would say that for, for most of the business leaders in China, um, Chinese and, and multinational, it's, it's not the top issue on their agenda. But yes, it's there, but it's maybe five or six. They're really concerned about, you know, how do we get more productivity out of our assets? Because the cost of everything as, into, as either a business leader is going up so significantly in China, not just labor, for your cost of capital, your cost of water, your cost of electricity, and your ability to pass those price increases through to the customer is, is low. And so that's why you've seen a, a margin squeeze in, in many, many businesses. And that's, you know, for, for people operating businesses on the ground, whether it's service businesses, manufacturing businesses, or even agricultural, you know, that, that's the number one priority. And they're saying, how do we bring technology into our businesses? How do we you know, substitute perhaps labor, so it's capital for labor. How do we um, change our business model because of the way the Internet's allowing us to do things more efficiently? Uh, and yes, they pay attention to the exchange rate, but they don't expect anything sufficiently dramatic like you might have seen in an India or an Indonesia that's really going to change the game for them. As chairman of McKinsey Asia, you have the, the unique perspective, if you will, to, to talk to CEOs and leaders around Asia that represent major companies around the world. And I'm just curious, what's their number one concern when you talk about Asia growth? Really, whether we're going to start to enter a new era of higher levels of volatility. Um, you know, we've had, we've had five or six years of, you know, pretty steady um, economic environment and as the stimulus pullback happens in the US we've already seen volatility uh, driven by um, ca capital moving back to the US you know we have a lot of very important elections taking place in Asia this year um, and and definitely I feel that there's a concern that 
Um, you know, we're going to see stronger swings up and down. Uh, a lot of confidence in the underlying growth rate over time, but that the, mm. the, the ups and downs around that trend line for growth are going to get greater in the next few years. And that's just very hard for, for businesses to, to deal with. Gordon Orr, I wish we had more time. Director and Chairman of McKinsey Asia, thank you very much. Live for us from Shanghai.